Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Daniela Ligero, and I'm the CEO of Together for Girls. And I'm also the chair of the executive committee of the Global Partnership to End Violence Against Children. And it's such an honor to be with you here today for the Keeping Children Safe 2020 Summit. For those of you who don't know, Together for Girls is a global public-private partnership that started about 10 years ago. And we are focused on ending violence against children with special attention to sexual violence and to adolescent girls. And we're a partner of UN organizations, governments, private sector, civil society, working in over 20 countries around the world. We were started from this basic realization that a problem of this magnitude cannot be solved by a single actor or partner alone. We have to work in partnership. And we believe that data and evidence when combined with strategic advocacy that elevates the voices of survivors can lead to effective action to end all forms of sexual violence against children. And so I'm really delighted to be with you during this event this week. And I want to share perspectives from three different kind of hats I wear. I want to share some perspectives as a scientist and a psychologist. I want to share some perspectives as a leader of an organization. And I also want to share some perspectives as a survivor of child sexual abuse myself and as an advocate. So first, let me start as a scientist. So I'm a psychologist by training. I'm a scientist and a researcher. And I've believed for the last 20 years that I've been working on this issue that data and evidence must always show the way. Sexual violence is the single largest silent pandemic of our time and it was already roaring before the COVID-19 pandemic hit. So we need to be able to show the magnitude of this problem through our research, but also solutions that work. And at Together for Girls, we've partners, partnered with the US Centers for Disease Control, CDC, UNICEF, and governments from around the world to implement violence against children's surveys, or VACs, that show the magnitude and the extent of the problem of sexual violence against children and adolescents. We now have data for over 10% of the world's population under 24. And we know that the statistics are appalling. About one in four girls and one in nine boys experience some form of sexual violence before the age of 18. We also know from recent evidence that with COVID-19, um, the economic and social strains on families are increasing significantly the vulnerability to children for exploitation and abuse. And that actually being online and at home and the kinds of measures, the critical essential measures that have been taken to spread, to stop the spread of the virus also have implications for increased vulnerability to child sexual exploitation and abuse online and in the home. So more than ever, it's critical that we think about these issues and that we use evidence and data to guide the way. Now, the international child safeguarding standards that keep children safe has developed really are built on the best possible evidence of how to protect children. And I want to commend them on that. You know, the four standards that look at policy, people, procedures, and accountability are each one critically important, but also mutually reinforce each other because we know that without, with policies and procedures, um, but no accountability, for example, we're really not going to see the difference we need to see. So I want to commend keeping children safe and the broader alliance you have for all the work you've done. And today, it's really widely recognized and accepted that all children have the right to be protected, regardless of where they live, and that we need tough international and domestic, you know, national child safeguarding standards to help keep children safe around the world and in the countries and communities where they live. Um, and really having data and evidence to guide that is critical. At Together for Girls, we launched last year a review of the evidence of all the global evidence on what works to prevent sexual violence against children. And of course, safeguarding and all the kind of work that we're talking about during this conference showed up as one of the critical components that needs to be implemented to keep children safe, along with a variety of, of other kinds of interventions focused on prevention. Now I want to talk a little bit about my experience as a leader. 
um, again, both as the CEO of Together for Girls, but also within my role in the End Violence Global Partnership to End Violence Against Children, or End Violence for short. You know this already, but leadership matters. Preventing child abuse in all its forms takes more than policies and procedures. It requires leadership, accountability, and a culture change right from the top of any organization. And implementing safeguarding standards means really listening to children, to their communities, and transforming the culture of organizations to put their rights, their dignity, and their safety at the heart of every decision. At Together for Girls, we've really prioritized that safety, and I'm really proud of the work we've done around safeguarding ourselves. And I'm also proud of the work that the Global Partnership to End Violence Against Children has done by really promoting safeguarding, um, by encouraging that all organizations that join in violence, either, either as members or grantees, are now required, so it's more than encouraging, it's requiring them to have safeguarding policies and procedures in place, um, that the End Violence Secretariat can then help them you know, implement, evaluate. We also encourage all fund grantees that access funds through the End Violence Fund to include budget lines within their proposals for safeguarding and then to strengthen their capacity to get training and whatever else they need to affect not only that organization but downstream all of their partners. This is the kind of leadership that we need to make sure that we're protecting children. And I commend all the leaders of other organizations who have taken similar steps. Now I want to speak to you a little bit as an advocate and as a survivor myself. So yes, like millions of folks around the world, I was sexually abused as a child, starting at the age of six by someone close to my family. And for many years, I lived in silence and in fear. But I was one of the few fortunate ones who eventually spoke about her abuse and was able to access resources, support, and a loving, caring community to help me heal. Um, and I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't had access to that support, to those services, and to the help I got to get me where I am today. And it's made me the advocate I am today, the advocate working to prevent any other child in the world from going through what I had to go through. And I know that we need to do much better in supporting survivors in their healing but also in breaking the silence around child sexual exploitation, abuse, and sexual violence. Um, and I want to be clear, breaking the silence should not be on survivors. It should be on everyone, on leaders, on decision makers, on institutions, on communities, on parents. We all have a role in breaking that silence and making sure that survivors don't feel alone, but more importantly, that we stop these cycles of violence that continue to pass from one generation to the other. And as an advocate, I also believe change is possible. We know it's bad and we know there are a lot of horrible things happening out there, but it doesn't have to be this way. We know from the data, from the evidence that there are policies, interventions, programs that can help prevent sexual violence against children and adolescents from happening and can also help those who've experienced it heal. So we really need to do more to make sure that this vision, this vision that guides me and I'm sure guides you, that every single organization in the world working with and for children, from a school to an organized sports organization, from a small community organization to a massive international NGO, um, to a multilateral organization, from a religious group to a large tech giant, all of them need to be equipped to protect children from all forms of child sexual exploitation and abuse. And let me be clear, this will only happen, this vision of every single organization really putting children at the center and protecting them, this is only going to happen when doing so is no longer a choice and it's no longer optional or a nice to have. We need to work as a network of organizations, survivors, advocates around the globe to make sure that protecting children is required, that it is non-negotiable, 
and that it is standard practice. And we've already done a lot of progress. There's already a lot of progress on this if you look back, but there's still a lot to do. And organizations, institutions, leaders are not gonna change until they really feel the pressure from all of us to make sure that they do so. You know, the activist, the American activist, Angela Davis once said, I am no longer accepting the things I cannot change. Instead, I am changing the things I cannot accept. That's what I've chosen to do with my life and as a leader in the organizations I work in. And I know that that's what you're doing too. If you're here at this conference, tuning in for any part of it, I know that you're really trying to work on a world where every child is protected and you're trying to make this a better place. And for that, I thank you. Thank you for all that you're doing. I'm so honored to walk side by side with you. And let's continue to work together to change the things we can no longer accept. Thank you so much. And I hope everyone has a wonderful conference.